Today I'm going to show you how to make a valance. Now I've shown you how to do a valance already, but this valance is different. This valance is with um, some tails joined onto it and some, um, some swags coming down the centre here. So we're going to do this all in one coast and this here at the top is just pencil plate. It looks like it's puffed out but really it's pencil plate. Now um, this is just going to be gathered up and here in the picture it's giving you the effect as though it is pleated over. Now once you've used pencil plate, unless you've pleated up the top it's virtually impossible to get that effect really. So that this picture is deceiving. So um, I know before I know before I've started that you will not see the contrasting colour behind. You will not. Um, and if I was to wanted to see this, I'd have to pleat each section first, then gather it. And then once you've done that, because this is a heavy fabric which I'll be using, it will be really bulky up the top. So you will see. So in between now, on this person's window, I'm going to be putting wooden blinds and they're having white wooden blinds, Venetian blinds here. Uh, you, I've got four curtains here, but I'm not actually going to do four curtains because my sample, my sample overlayers, this is the one I found with, I didn't have one with two curtains, with just a pair of curtains. So here on the window, it's a bay window I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to, and you will see this when I finished. So I'm going to have the wooden blind. These look like pleated, um, um, these look like um, Roman blinds, but I'm actually using wooden blinds. And then I'm going to have, um, I'm only going to have a pair of curtains. So these ones here aren't going to be there. And then I'm going to make the valance, which is what it's, today it's all about. Let's remove this now you see what it's going to look like so let me remove this and you see just the balance so today that is what I'm going to make so I will proceed now I'm going to show you what the fabric is I'm using That's the fabric. You're looking at it upside down at the moment. I've already already made the curtain. I've already made the curtain. And you've seen me make the curtain so many times. But I just wanted to show you what the fabric is like. And this is upside down at the moment. And here are her, her tassels. So it's gonna look gorgeous. So that's one window and this is the dining room that I'm doing and then I'll be doing the um, the living room as well and she'll be having swags and tails in the living room. So we all will proceed with this. That is today's lesson. Let me tell you a bit more about this. The tail I'm going to have, I think it's going to finish at uh, 44 inches. The curtain I've made it to 88 inches, so that my tails are going to be half the curtain, which is 44. This section here, I think it's going to be roughly around 14 inches, and then it's going to sweep up roughly around. 10 inches. Now I do have a little bit of a problem on the customer's window whereby on the section of these windows the frame comes down and it shows. Now I'm not in the habit of taking away people's light so what I'm going to do is at one point you will see a little bit of the frame which it cannot be held. If I wanted not to show the frame then I would have to make these a lot more longer and if I made it a lot more longer I'll be definitely taking away the light but I hope that 
because it's only um was it this is four inches going up there four inches from the the incline um i hope it does make a difference and shows that there is meant to be a curve of swag effect um and we'll see if if it isn't then it's either you bring this down longer and that shorter but that's what we're going to do and the overall width of this is um 90 97 inches and the board is up here this return is six inches return at the side and this bit here is going to be held on with um tape now there's a special tape for this let me show you this tape this tape is a three inch tape fringe tape and each one of these is this fabric here by the time you gather this up this acts as though it's velcro so it's the receiving end this receives the rough end so it sticks onto the velcro so um, this tape is more or less um, it's pencil pleat tape but it doesn't actually have a name for it so, but that's that's what to look out for. All these pockets here. By the time they're gathered up together, it acts like a Velcro. And this goes onto the wood. So that's the tape we're using today. Now we have the fabric the right way up. So this is the top and that's the bottom. And um, what we're gonna do first of all, I'm gonna cut out, you know, this is for the tail. So I need, say, roughly a six inch return for the tail. So let's say six, 12, six, six is 12. So 12 inches to gather up. That is the return here. And we've got that amount for the, the um, tail going up. So I am going to make sure the pattern repeat is the same. So I'm gonna put this on top first to make sure it's the same and the right way up and then I'm going to flip it to make sure that I've got mirror image so here we have a pattern repeat there and to show you this fabric wastes a lot this fabric is a 47 centimeters wastage. What I'd like to do is from my pattern here to be the top and 44 inches what I'd like to do is I'd like to have my pencil pleat starting with the top so you see these points at the top so that'd be nice but what happened is all this fabric will be wasted all this the above fabric but the one underneath now it starts there which is too which is it interferes so the top bit of this will be cut off so what do I do about that? Do I disregard this one underneath and try and get them all the same? Yes, for continuity, so that it looks nice. Right, let me move this out of the way. I'm so sorry, I didn't realise. Uh, right, so as I said before, what do I do? what we do is we pay attention to details right so i would like this this bow this pattern here my line to start up the top here but the one underneath doesn't quite make it so it's either i disregard that and just cut it or there's always something when you say what is it about that thing why do i like it or is it what is it about that? Why don't I like it? 
It's because somewhere along the line, the pattern is playing with your eyes and you don't like it. it so the pattern has gone off. Um, to over-exaggerate, here's the pattern. And you're looking at it, but over-exaggerate it, it's not straight. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to move the one underneath. I'm going to waste that. I'm going to use it for something else. And to make sure that my pattern here starts starts at the top I'm going to make sure I'll give that a two inch extra up the top so cut this off waste this bit here start my pattern so my pencil pleat will be here and it will look beautiful so that's what I'm going to do and that's what's called paying attention to details Here's another tip. As you can see, I reeled this out because what I did is, when I made the curtain, um, I made one pair of curtain and I've got to make another pair of curtain, but the suppliers didn't have enough fabric. So in order for me to carry on with my work, I cut out X amount of drops that I needed. Now you could always forget, well, what at what point did I, at what point did I stop? Where did I do the patterns for the pattern repeats? So what I've done here is I cut out the next section and hopefully that the next batch of fabric, that the, um, the colors will actually not be far off. So it would be able to look the same. But what I have done is this is my template for the next curtain which has got six joinings in it which is a patio door and to make sure that this curtain looks the same as the other curtain because one's in the living room and one's in the dining room I cut one at the left that I wanted so this becomes my template and it goes on to the next onto the fabric when it comes and I know exactly where the patterns have started so I match it up with this one and then by the time I finish both curtains will look the same so that's a little tip right if you have that if you're faced with a situation like I am and I don't have enough fabric and I'm going to need to make sure you cut your template out so they're, they're both the same so that's this one and and because I remembered I made sure I didn't cut it cut it up as well so I'm now going to put this aside Right, so here's my pattern. My pattern is 44. So what I'm gonna do now, this is safe. That's my pattern. I've got two inches up here for turn, allowing to turn under, right? But each time I cut what I want, I waste quite a lot up at the top. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make use of my fabric. I'm going to make use of my fabric and don't waste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the pattern at the bottom here so that by the time I cut down here, the next bit can go straight up here and everything will be fine. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got to analyze this. I've got to work things out so that I don't waste too much fabric. So my pattern repeat is that little leaf there. So I'll go to the next little leaf, which is there, and that is where I'm going to keep on cutting. And then the, the next time, every one of my pattern should fit up here. So that's what I'm going to do, because this is silly. And you've got to have some consideration for your customers.
I've got the two tails now. Now I need the bits in the centre. I need four drops. I need four drops. Once again, I still have to match the fabric up. Now that should match perfectly. No waste there. And we've got a flaw in this fabric. Look at that. There's a flaw in the fabric. Okay, let's leave it at that. So I'm going to cut five of these. Um, 14 inches is the drop. There we have 14 inches. So from that point to there, that's 14 inches. So I'm clear. Now the pattern repeat starts here once again. So we'll do the same. So I'm going to cut it right there and I will be safe. So it, that will allow for my um, seam allowance as well. So that's fine. I can hear you all saying, ah, oh, she hasn't measured it. <laughs> I've had this in the past. 
I love fabric that's got patterns in it. Once they've got patterns in it and I've done my calculation, I can rely on the patterns. And as I said to you before, I wanted the tip of that flower effect to be all along the edge. So what I'm doing now is making sure that I've gone, I've added on the extra inch, but what I've done is I've gone above it and I've got the leaves. So I use that as my paying attention to the finer details. So when I turn this over, you will see what exactly what I mean. Do you remember I stitched the um, three inch tape, the pencil pleat tape on top of it, the lining? So when I ripped it off, I would have had those stitching marks there. The ironing helps to get rid of it. Not only that, because the fabric is over it now, you can't see where I use, I um, put the stitching in the first place. So it's all gone. And it was at the top here as well, so it's gone now. So nothing to indicate what I did and how I did it. Can you see at the top the point of what I wanted? They're all there in line. And that tells me that it's straight. So I don't really need to go pretending that I'm going to be measuring the top to get it straight. And as far as I'm concerned, you won't get it straight all the time anyway by measuring. But if you follow the pattern, at least that will be straight. And they are. It's, they're, they're exact. I can't say more. I'm not steaming, I'm allowing the iron to steam itself. It's almost, this is almost like velvet. You can see the ironing mark, that's why I'm afraid to iron it. But when I get to the customer's house, I get my big steamer out, I give it a good old steam and set the pleats, fantastic. Now, I finish the dining room curtains. These are valance and they are shaped as the customer required. They look beautiful. I can't wait myself to see the whole thing in its environment with the wooden blinds, Venetian blinds and the curtains just draped up down the dining room window. Exquisite. I'll move on to the next subject now. Thank you for watching my show. Oh, let me get the curtains and show you. Because I never did show you the curtains. They are enormous.
Here with the curtain. Here's something I made earlier. <laughs> and now I'm putting them all together. So this weekend it should be our hanging up. Thank you for watching my show. Yes, hello. So here we are once again, as you can see. You saw the making of the lining, and now, as I said, the lining and the main fabric is going to merge together. And here you now see it on the actual window. Right now, we have the owner of the curtain standing right next to me. Her name is Ginny, right? and I'd like to ask her, what does she feel about her curtains? I just love them. They're absolutely gorgeous, well made, painstakingly put up, and I'm so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> yes. Where did you actually hear about me, or where, how did you hear about me? I went, on the, I went on the internet searching mm -hmm. and then I saw you and I thought you were local mm -hmm. and then I went to your website yeah. and I saw you busy working in your website. So you actually went on YouTube? Yes. Yeah, so you saw me there? Yes. Yeah. Right. And I was impressed and I thought, oh, this looks good. And then I read all the reviews. Okay. Oh, people were, were fixing their curtains, even old curtains that you rebound. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and here we are, now Welcome in your... farm. <laughs> yes, and the, the time it took to do this as well, where I'm missing that, from the time we first met, it was, what was it, three weeks? Three weeks ago, yeah. Three weeks ago, so you saw me, I came to your house, I measured up the window for you, you picked your fabric, yeah, and um, and um, ordered all that was required, and here we are, three weeks later, she has her dining room curtains, and as you can see, these are valances, and I shaped them, and I said in the video when I was doing it as well, that I might not get the lining to show, but what I did, especially for you on YouTube, I actually pleated it so you can see the line right. as a contrast and at the side here as a tail. But normally when I put them up, I just gather it and, and I don't show the, no this. Line. But I thought on this occasion I'll do that. And as you can see, all my curves are in the right place. They're there in the oh, corner yeah. and in the corner. Yeah? So as you can see. So these curtains are actually pencil pleat curtains, but what we try to do is I set them with the iron and you get pleats looking as almost as though there are pinch pleats. Yeah. So by the time um, Jenny opens her clothes, her curtains, right, these pleats should stay nicely oh. set. Okay. And it can fool anyone to say that they're pinch pleat curtains. <coughs> yeah. Right? So here we have now the finished product, but now, as well as the blinds, as you can see, she's also got the white blinds, and how beautifully they look. Yeah, they really do. Really nice. I'm quite impressed with myself. <laughs> I'm very impressed. <laughs> right, so here we are, we have this, this one, the dining room. We've also got the living room to do, and the kitchen, so you will see you will see swags again, but you won't see the actual making of the swags, but what you will see is the actual design of the swags, whereby I think I'm going to make these swags a little bit bigger than what you've seen on the lessons. And the way how I'm going to develop them, I think I'm putting up five swags, but the way how I'm putting up, they're going to be slightly different. So tune in for the next episode, chapter three, four, Ah, now you heard from the wife, now let's hear from the husband. <laughs> we have Kojo who's just joined us. Um, and I like to have his input on what he thinks about curtains. Because most of the time, men don't get involved. But Kojo has got involved. 
So now, Kojo, what do you, and be honest, I don't mind, I can take it. What do you think about your curtains? Um, I think um, what I've seen is brilliant and it's uh, handled professionally. Yeah. Um, I like um, the style, I like the colors shows in which you did help. So I really appreciate that and I, I love the work that's come out so far. Yes, great. Oh, I'm, glad. I'm glad you're so pleased with it. And when he says, um, I helped a, a little bit, I helped, but they did choose the style themselves. Mine and everything, they picked the style, it was yeah. just down to them. Mm -hmm. um, the arrangement and everything, it was down to. Koja? Yes, Koja. Koja. Yeah. But they have given me free range oh, on yeah. their living room, mm -hmm. and they don't know exactly how it's going to look, but um, I'm sure they'll be pleased. So uh, as I yeah, we are sure too. Yeah. So far, so good. So we, we, we trust in your Great. work and believe you're going to see something good. Yeah. You will sit around your dining table and you will observe your characters yeah. and admire them. And not only you, watch your guests <coughs> when they sit around the table. While you're talking to them, their eyes will be on you. Like yeah. Yeah. Right? So enjoy your curtain. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home. Thank you. I yeah. really appreciate that. And thank you too for watching you. for watching my show. Please give me your comments. Anything you you um, see that you're not you don't like or whatever, please I can take it. Um, just let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>